Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall, amanuensis to those shadowy figures whose outre experiences are so faithfully related here at this point on your dial. Gambling, said George Washington, is the child of avarice, the brother of iniquity, and the father of mischief. But does that include a friendly little game? What happens to most friendly little games? Friends become enemies, little becomes big, and suddenly it isn't a game anymore. But enough of this moralizing. Deal the cards. Who... Who are you? You know who I am. I am the Countess Anna Fedotovna. But you're dead. Yes, I am dead. Then how can you be standing there? Look at me. Can you doubt I am the Countess? But you were buried this afternoon. What does that have to do with it? What does that have to do with it? Enough. Enough of this meaningless chatter. Let us get down to business. What? What business? Our mystery drama, The Queen of Spades, was adapted from the Alexander Pushkin classic, especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan, and stars Michael Tolan. It is sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division and Anheuser-Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser. I'll be back shortly with Act One. Let us go back, uh, oh, perhaps 150 years to the Moscow of Imperial Russia. And let us make the acquaintance of some handsome young officers who have been engaging in the second most favorite pastime of handsome young officers, a friendly game of cards. It is now five o'clock in the morning, and supper, or breakfast, if you will, is being served. The winners, of course, have better appetites than the losers. But the champagne is flowing freely, and soon the entire company is in good spirits. Well, Namorov, this should be a lesson to me. What kind of lesson, Tomsky? (laughs) Never to play with members of the horse guard. Oh, don't begrudge me a little financial success this evening. After all, you're the one who's lucky in love. Luck, gentlemen, is merely the verdict of mathematics. Hey, what's this? Herman, are you still here? Yes. It was an interesting evening. Well, gentlemen, your attention, please. Now, what do you think of our friend Lieutenant Herman here? For example... Is it true, Herman, that you have never held a card in your hand? It's true. Is it true that you've never made a wager in all your life? It's the gospel truth. And yet you come here every night and you sit till five in the morning and watch the rest of us play? Yes, Herman. Why? Why? Gambling interests me very much. But I am not in the position to sacrifice the necessary in the hope of winning the superfluous. Oh, 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 that's Herman. That was spoken like a true German. Yes, my father was German, and he was a prudent man. Herman, I'll wager you still have the first ruble your father ever earned. Yes, Herman. Is it true that your father left you a million? Oh, it's all very well for you to talk, Tomsky. Your father is a prince. You have estates, you have serfs. But I must live on my salary. Well, if that's the kind of living that pleases you... Oh, it's easy to understand our fanatically economical friend here, but there's one person who has me completely baffled. And who is that, Tomsky? My grandmother, Countess Anna Fedotovna. She absolutely refuses to play cards. Well, what is there so baffling about an old lady of over 85 who will not gamble? Ah, because this particular old lady knows the secret. What secret? (laughs) <laughs> I thought that would fetch you, Herman. The what secret? The secret of how to win. The secret of how to win. How to win each time you play. How to win as if you could actually read the back of the cards. Oh, there is no such secret. Ah, now I'm about to tell the secret. Pay attention, everyone, now. Some 60 years ago, my grandmother paid a visit to Paris, where, naturally, she created a sensation. 
She was hailed as the Muscovite Venus. The visit was a triumph, except for one little detail. Grandma lost her entire fortune, one million rubles, at a gambling house run by the Duc d'Orléans. Think of it. A million rubles in one night. A million rubles in one night. Impossible. Ah, that's precise, unpractical Herman rebelling against the very idea. But believe me, it happened. Now, to continue. There was Grandma ruined. But she had made the acquaintance of a rather remarkable man. I dare say you've all heard of the fantastic Prince de Saint-Germain. He was known to be fabulously wealthy. And he paid Grandma a visit. He was curious to see the lovely Muscovite Venus, who was even more beautiful in distress. Will you get to the point of the story? Well, my grandmother asked him for a loan. And you know what he said? He said no. Oh, you would have said no. But he said, Your Highness, I could advance you the sum you require, but I know that you should not rest easy until you had paid me back. However, there's another way out of your difficulty. A way that will allow you to win back your money at the gambling table. And in return for one of your dazzling smiles, I shall reveal it to you. Was that all he wanted? One of her smiles? Oh, and you forget. This was a Frenchman. And those people invented chivalry. At any rate, he told her a secret. <laughs> I almost believe I would sell my soul to know that secret. But armed with it, my grandmother returned to the casino, chose three cards, and played them one after the other. All three won. And my grandmother recovered every ruble she had lost. Well? Well, what? What were the three cards? Ha, 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 ha. That's the secret. You have a grandmother who knows how to choose three winning cards at Pharaoh, and she refuses to play. That's correct. But why? And that's uh, also a secret. Well, haven't you ever asked her to tell you the secret? Oh, I ask her every day. And what does she say? She says, no. I realize that I am somewhat of a comedic figure to my brother officers. I am tolerated rather than accepted. That is because I am different. They call me Herman the German, and it's quite a joke. But I do not mind their laughter because the things they laugh at in me are precisely the things they lack in themselves. Seriousness, thrift, practicality, and character. Oh yes, character, for I also have a weakness, gambling. I would love to wager on the throw of the dice, the turn of the cards, the thrill, the excitement, the fever in the blood. But no, I, I control myself. And yet, if I knew the secret, Tomsky's grandmother's secret, <laughs> what are those three cards? Suppose I could get her to tell me the secret. <laughs> but why should she tell me? She won't even tell it to her own grandson. But is it true? Can there be such a secret? Ah, no, I, I shall not think about it any longer. I shall dismiss it from my mind. No, it's you, Herman. Oh, I, I see you are about to go out. Let me call on you another time. No, 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 that's quite all right, old man, if it's urgent. Well, well, um, yes. Hang it all, I, I, I don't know how to say this. Tomsky, could you introduce me to your grandmother, the Countess Anna Fedotovna? <laughs> you wish to be presented to my grandmother? Why? Well, she is, without a doubt, the most famous noble woman in Russia, the Tsarina aside. And she goes way back to the ancient regime. I... I thought I would like to pay my respects, and, uh... And, and, yes. And perhaps I could ask her to tell me the secret of the three winning cards. <laughs> You'll ask her to tell you? Oh, that would be a treat. Will you do it? My good fellow, I wouldn't miss it for the world. As a matter of fact, I'm going there right now, so come on along. 
I'd never seen such... such magnificence, such splendor. The the painting, the statues, the, the carpets. Oh, this is just a hovel. You should see her palace in St. Petersburg. And so he gazed deeply into her eyes and saw his own soul. And he knew that in her love lay his salvation. We'd better wait outside the door. Lisaveta is still reading to her. Well, well, go on, Lisaveta. But that's the end, your ladyship. A charming girl, poor Lisaveta. The end? How can it be the end? A distant cousin, too bad she has no dowry. I'm sorry, your ladyship. So it she is my end. grandmother's companion. Buy me a new novel. As you say, your ladyship. Uh, I want to go out driving. Why aren't you dressed? Well, I thought uh, we would read this afternoon. Order my carriage this moment. Yes, at once. Come quick before they leave. Uh, Grandma and uh, Lisaveta. Oh, well, you scoundrel. You have finally decided to favor an ugly old lady with a visit, have you? Ah, Grandmama, you are and always shall be the Muscovite Venus. <laughs> <laughs> May I present Lieutenant Alexei Petrovich Hermann mm. and my grandmother's companion, Lizaveta Ivanovna. Charmed. How do you do? <laughs> and what are your duties in the military service, Lieutenant? If you are a friend of my grandson's, I dare say they are wenching, drinking, and gambling. Oh, no, Grandma. Lieutenant Herman is very serious and sober. As a matter of fact, I brought him here because he has a request to make of you. Indeed. Well, uh... Well, you said you wanted to learn a certain secret. Secret? Secret? What sort of secret? Go ahead. You might as well, old boy. Your, your Highness, please hear me out. I... I'm a very sober person, a hard-working person. Your, your nephew will bear me out. Oh, yes, it's true. I was born poor. Oh, respectable. Indeed, my father was a member of the merchant class. But he never had much luck, and therefore I was left with, with very little, and so... Well, well, on with it. On I, with it. I need a considerable sum of money. Not just for myself, but, but for the chaste and pure woman I shall someday meet and marry. Ah. Uh. And what has this to do with me? What has this to do with you? Well, your ladyship, highness, you can make it all come true. Indeed? How? I could win my fortune at the gambling table if... if you will tell me the secret of the three cards. If I will tell you... If I will tell you... Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Oh, this is too much. Oh, please, madame. Did you hear him? Oh, 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 he's a rare bird, all right. But what can you expect from, from a German? Oh, 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 why should I tell you? Oh, no, no, no. I must, I must control myself. But I can't. I can't. <laughs> Well, Herman, I'm, uh, I'm sorry. I thought it was a perfectly reasonable request. And I don't like to be laughed at. Well, perhaps if you'd worked up to it gradually. I thought I had built up a case. Well, I, I mean, if you'd waited until you'd gotten to know her a bit better. There's no time. She's an incredibly old woman. Why, she could be dead in a few days. Poor Herman. And stop saying poor Herman. <laughs> But that was my name. I had become poor Herman. Tomsky isn't a bad fellow, but who can resist telling a funny story? Well, I didn't see anything funny in it, but everyone else did. I may not have a sense of humor, but what I do have is a sense of determination. And I have determined to learn the secret of the three cards. And I shall learn that secret. After all, I... I asked her once, and I asked her politely. I asked her the way a gentleman should. She laughed at me. Well, there are other ways. Yes, indeed. Laugh, my lady. Laugh, my friends. But Lieutenant Alexei Petrovich Herman will yet have the last laugh on all of you. once or twice to throw the dice, 
is a gentlemanly game. But he does not win who plays with sin in the secret house of shame. Since we're involved with gambling here, we thought we'd express some of Oscar Wilde's feelings on the matter. Well, we have the incredibly old countess who says no, and the incredibly insistent young Herman who says yes. The collision course is set and ready for act two. Success, we are told, is a secret, a magical secret, a mysterious key that unlocks the door to wealth and happiness, to love and everything the heart will desire. And so many of us devote our lives to searching for the secret, the fabulous formula, the trick, the gimmick. And this is the present occupation of Alexei Petrovich Herman, a lieutenant in the engineering battalion of the Tsar. Did I say occupation? I should have said obsession. Yes, I was determined to wrest that secret from that hideous old hag by fair means or foul. But how? She would no longer receive me. And even if she would, she would refuse to divulge the secret. I would have to force it out of her. I would have to be alone with her, alone. But how could I ever manage to be alone with her? I wrestled with the problem. I, I even went to church to pray for the solution. And of course, when one prays with a sincere and earnest heart, his prayers are usually answered. My prayers were answered, and the how was revealed to me. She was sitting there just up ahead of me. The servant girl. No, not, not the servant girl, the companion. What was her name? Lizaveta Ivanovna. She is the how. I shall make a declaration of love to her. But how do I do that? I have never spoken of love before. You in love? Is it possible? Well, who is the young lady, the fortunate object of such overpowering adoration? Will you or won't you help me? Of course I will, old fellow. How? Well, that's it, Tomsky. How? How does one tell a girl one is madly in love with her? One says, I am madly in love with you. Is that all there is to it? Well, one either says it directly or one hides it in the midst of a flowery speech. Which method would you prefer? I, I'm a direct sort of person, but I, I think I would, for the first time, use a flowery speech. Well, here is a novel by the famous Valentinian Protopopov. Browse through it. It contains all the ammunition you need. The butler sent me up to see you, mademoiselle. He did? Why? Oh, because I have a letter for you. For me? Well, there must be some mistake. Uh, you are Lizaveta Ivanovna Surian, are you not? Yes. But I don't know anyone who would write to me. Well, this is your name on the envelope, and I was instructed to give... For me a letter? Well, thank you. Thank you very much. I am touched to the very depths of my soul by your charm, your beauty, your goodness. The light of heavenly angels shines from your eyes. I am the dirt under your feet. I am nothing. I am no one. And yet I dare to aspire, to dream, to hope. Oh, my beloved, speak the word that raises me to paradise or hurls me into the pit. <sighs> Lizaveta Ivanovna. Please, please, I... Lizaveta Ivanovna, have pity on me. No, pity. You're the one who should have pity on me. I'm a poor girl. Poor? Your condition of life is even higher than mine. My father was merely a merchant. Your father was a state counselor. He died penniless. It doesn't matter. It matters. I have no dowry. It doesn't matter. I love you. And soon you would hate me. Oh, I swear by You'll my soul. You'll be in debt. 
There would be no money. I swear by my hope Your of salvation. Your creditors would haunt you. I must have you, Lizabeth Ivanovna. And you would think I, a handsome young officer, I could have made a wealthy match. Lizabeth no, Ivanovna. Please, please, Lieutenant. I am sorry. It cannot be. My beloved, your coldness, your indifference shall not chill my heart. A poor flower worships the sun. And if the sun is unaware of its adorer, does that lessen the adoration? Dear Lieutenant Herman, what you propose is impossible. I have the honor to remain... Lizaveta Ivanovna Surin. I long for you as one who has spent weeks in the burning desert yearns for water. Please, I beg you, cool the fire that flames in me. You must forget me because it is impossible for us to marry. How goes your secret love? She refuses to see me, Tomsky. Well, that's to be expected. But she is unmovable. That's a good sign. How? A woman is always at her most yielding when she's at her most stubborn. None of my letters seem to have swayed her in the slightest. Ah, but she answers them, doesn't she? Well, as long as you receive an answer, there is hope. But the answer is always no. Be determined. Keep writing. Something will happen. But what? Oh, I don't know. Something, anything. She'll be stung by a bee, or she'll smell a beautiful rose, or someone will say a kind word to her, or a cross word, and suddenly she'll burst into tears, and... And what? And she'll fall into your arms. Oh, oh my. Oh, my goodness. Oh. Well, there you are. Thank you for deciding to waste some of your precious time on me. Uh, I, uh, I'm sorry, sir. Your ladyship, I didn't hear you ring at first. What's wrong with you these days? Forever sighing and mooning about, are you ill? No, 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 your ladyship. Order the carriage. What sort of weather is it? A calm and uh, sunny and warm. No, you never know what you're talking about. I feel cold. It must be snowing and freezing. Uh, yes, your ladyship. Now, where are you going? Well, uh, to order the carriage. To order the carriage? Whatever for? But your ladyship just told me what to order the What has happened to your carriage. senses? Would I want to go driving about in a snowstorm? No, the sun is shining. Don't you dare contradict me. No, 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 madam. Uh, shall I read to you? Read to me? Yes. Really, my girl? Didn't I tell you to order the carriage? Oh. Oh, uh, Oh, Lizaveta Ivanovna, you come back, Lizaveta! Oh, now what's gotten into that fool of a girl? I am convinced that your intentions are honorable. I believe your declaration of love. And I see you as the knight in shining armor I have always yearned for. Oh, how I long to be my own mistress and not the terrified creature of a tyrannical old woman. Come to me. Save me. Tonight, the Countess and I shall return from a ball at the French Embassy at midnight. The servants shall all be asleep. I will see that the small gate at the rear of the house will be open. Enter and then go to a rear door. Once inside is a staircase that leads up to a hallway. The first door is the Countess's bedroom. The second is mine. Remember... I love you and rely upon your honor. Oh, 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 who is in this room? Do not be alarmed. For heaven's sake, do not be alarmed. Who, who are you? Lieutenant Herman. You remember me? How did you get in here? It doesn't matter. You can ensure the happiness of my life. Go away. Go away. You can name three cards. Three cards? Three secret winning cards. How to call them. The secret told you by the fabulous sorcerer, the Prince de Saint-Germain. There are no cards. There was no prince. Tell me the secret. It was a joke. 
Do you understand? They joke. Tell me the three winning cards. There are no cards. For whom are you keeping the secret? There is no secret. For your grandson? Uh, He's no. rich enough without it. I tell you, young man, there, there is no secret. You're no. old, as good as dead. Why do you refuse? Why? Be because, be because... Reveal the secret. And not only shall I bless you, but my children, my grandchildren, I, I, shall revere you as a saint. Well, speak, you horrid old hag. Speak or I'll blow your brains out. There, there is no secret. You think I hesitate to kill you? I have a pistol. See? No, no. All I have to do is pull back the hammer. So, you hear it, please? All I need to do now no. is pull the trigger... And I will pull the trigger if you don't... No! <laughs> Lieutenant Hillman, what are you doing? What are you doing with that pistol? I... I... I didn't kill her. You can... You can see that. She just died. Dead? The Countess is dead? Yes, and uh, I am the cause. <gasps> you? Yes. She knew about three secret cards which would always win at Pharaoh. I came here tonight to make her tell me. You came here tonight? But I thought you had come here to see me. I... I had intended to see you afterward. Then... You don't love me. No, I, I... I do love you. All you wanted was to gain admission to her bedroom. No, only to gain the financial foundation and, and security for our You're marriage. You're a monster. No, I had no intention of killing. Look, my... My pistol isn't even loaded. But now I look at your face. I see the devil himself. Please, leave. Go. No, I... I hope to have the honor of calling on you in the future, dear Miss I never want to see you again. I'm sorry it all turned out the way it did. But one must accept the good with the bad. I decided that I had better attend the funeral services... My friend, Lieutenant Tomsky, was touched. Sincerely touched. Oh, an old man, it's kind of you to take the time. Oh, she was a great lady. I, I've come to pay my respects. May I approach the coffin with you? Of course, I'm, I'm very grateful to you. Well, there she is. Looks just the same as she did in life. Huh? Herman. Herman, what is it? Uh, no. Oh, no. No, Herman, oh. look at the head. Help me. Uh, it's fainted. Fainted. Where? Where am I? In your rooms, Herman. What happened to me? Oh, I... I remember. I... I fainted. I... I saw... Well... What did you see? You must promise not to laugh at me. I, I promise. She... She winked at me. She what? She winked at me. Oh. Oh. You say that as if you think I'm crazy. I'm not. I'm the sanest person you know. But the old countess, my, my grandmother is dead. I know. But she winked at me. Right, if you say so. I don't care what anyone says. I looked at the old countess lying in her coffin. And suddenly she darted a kind of mocking look at me. And with her left eye, she winked. And that's the truth. Is someone knocking at the door? Well, stop your knocking and come in. Come in, the door's open. Who... Who are you? You know who I am. No. I am the Countess Anna Fedotovna. But... But you're dead. Yes, I am dead. Then... How can you be standing there? Enough of this meaningless chatter. Let us get down to business. What... What business...
Business. Isn't it remarkable how much business of all kinds we can have with each other and how suddenly it all ceases when one is dead? For the dead have no business. Isn't that true? And yet, here is a lady, freshly deceased, who has suddenly introduced a matter of business to our hero. The nature of the business? Well, you know you'll have to wait for Act Three. Accidents happen. And accidentally, Lieutenant Herman has caused the death of Countess Anna Fedotovna. But seemingly, the elderly Countess, or should we say the late Countess, harbors no grudge. Because here she is, visiting him in his wombs the day after her funeral. Is such a thing possible? Well, don't take my word for it. Listen for yourself. But you're dead. We have already established that. Dead people simply cannot leave the grave. And... Have you ever been a dead person? Have you? Well, no. I have been ordered to grant your request. My... my request? The three secret cards. Yes? Your three secret cards shall be... Listen. Three... Seven... Ace, they shall be dealt to you. They shall win for you. Do you understand? Three, seven, ace. These are the conditions. You must play one card and one card only on each of three successive nights. Understand? One card only on three nights in succession. How much money do you have? My, my father's inheritance. 50,000 rubles. Very well. Cash it in. Bring the 50,000 to the casino. Bet on the three. You will then have 100,000. The following night, bet the 100,000 on the seven. You will then have 200,000. On the final night, bet the 200,000 on the ace. You will walk away with 400,000 rubles. Four hundred thousand. And when I say walk away, I mean walk away from cards forever. You must never gamble again as long as you live. Oh, yes, yes. And one more thing. I shall forgive you my death if you marry my companion, Lizaveta Ivanovna. Well, of, of course. Of course. Remember... Your three magic cards, your three secret cards are three, seven, ace. Goodbye. Herman, my good friend, I came as soon as I received your message. Are you feeling all right? Well, yes, yes. Are, are you playing cards this evening? Oh, yes, of course. Where? At the usual place. Captain Namorov? Yes, he attracts a crowd of good fellows and he sets an excellent table. Yes, but I... I notice the stakes are rather low. Low? A 25-ruble limit? You call that low? Well, I, I compliment you, my wealthy friend. Where can one go to find a rather... Well, a, a game with a higher limit? Well, I do have a millionaire friend. Let's not beat about the bush, so... Why not? Let's go to the top. Let's visit Count Chekolinsky. Count Chekolinsky? Oh, he spent his entire life at the table. He's won millions. This is where the true gamblers go. Royalty, nobility. Could we go? Oh, everyone is welcome. But everyone is expected to play. I intend to play. Count Chekolinsky, may I present my good friend, Lieutenant Herman. Ah, I am honored to meet your acquaintance, Lieutenant. Uh, well, do not stand on ceremony. Please make my humble home yours. That morning, I had gone to the banker who administered the principal sum of my inheritance and against his strenuous objections, cashed in the entire amount. 
I was so sure of myself, so full of confidence that my fortune was made. But here, here once again, I, I wasn't sure. Was it a dream? Did the old lady come back from the dead, or was it my imagination? And then, I heard her voice. Three, seven, eight. And all my doubts were conquered. Very well, gentlemen. Who will join us for this bank? You, General? You, Monsieur? You, Admiral? Will you allow me to take a card, Count Chekolinsky? Oh, with pleasure, Lieutenant Hermann. And uh, now, gentlemen, your stakes, <laughs> Lieutenant. I stake 50,000 rubles on one card. Oh, my. You, gentlemen, gentlemen, please, please. Uh, allow me to inform you, Lieutenant, you are playing very high. Am I? If you will forgive me... What now, Count? Uh, while I am quite convinced your word is sufficient, uh, but for the sake of the order of the game, I must ask you to put your money on the card. I have a note of exchange from the banking house of Rostov. Is that acceptable? Completely. Let me look at your card. You have been dealt a three, a three, Herman. Do you realize you've wasted 50,000 rubles on a three? Quiet. The Count is about to deal himself a card. The dealer has a deuce. It's incredible. I swear. I believe my three beats your highness's two. Yes, Lieutenant. Your three has beaten me. Uh, shall we continue? Or do you desire a settlement? If you please. What luck. What fool's luck. Now, look, Herman, promise me one thing. You'll never gamble again. Oh, I intend to go back tomorrow. But why? You, you've won 50,000 rubles. Do you realize that? And tomorrow I shall win 100,000 more. You mean you intend to double your bet? Of course. Herman, you, you don't know what you're doing. I slept the deep sleep sleep of the just. I awoke late, breakfasted, attended to a few details, and as evening fell, summoned a carriage and returned to Count Chekolinsky's palace. As I entered, all conversation ceased. Every eye turned toward me. The Count himself came forward and took my hand. Ah, good evening, Lieutenant Hermann. And what is your pleasure this evening? I wish to wager... Shall you accommodate me? Of course. This way, please. Three, seven, ace. Three, seven, ace. It's... It's for Dane. Ready for the deal, Lieutenant Herman? Ready. I wager 100,000 rubles. Accepted? Accept it. Your card, my card. I have a six. I have a seven. I, uh, I see. Shall we continue? I should prefer to receive my winnings, if you please. Of course. Here you are. Your hundred thousand in cash. Thank you. Till tomorrow evening? Till tomorrow. You're not going back there. I won't let you. My good Tomsky, by now it should be apparent that I know what I'm doing. Herman, you have 200,000 rubles. Isn't that enough? It's just half of what I need. Half? Do you intend to wager the entire 200,000 on one? Of course. Well, you are a man of iron, a man of ice. 200,000 rubles on the turn of a single card. <laughs> you, you are also insane. My good friend, I simply cannot lose. Your stake, Lieutenant Herman? My stake is 200,000 rubles. Lieutenant, 
I must remind you, this is a fantastic wager. Can you cover it? Of course. For a moment, just a fleeting moment, I felt that twinge of doubt. Was it luck? Could it turn? No. No, the old countess had told me about the three cards. She was right about the three and the seven. Are you afraid to double your fortune, you fool? Didn't you commit murder for those three cards? Yes. Three, seven, ace. Stake your fortune on the last card. How can you lose? You are destined to draw the ace. My stake is 200,000 rubles. Covered. Your card? My card? My card is a king. My ace beats your king. Your queen loses. My queen? I have an ace. I don't have a... <laughs> but... But you... You said I would have an ace. I beg your pardon. <laughs> Did I say that? An ace? An ace? I was supposed to have an ace. <laughs> you have a queen, Lieutenant. You see? The queen of spades. Oh, it, it's not the queen of spades. It's the countess. <laughs> the countess. The old countess. <laughs> Look at her. Look at her. Listen. She's laughing at me. Uh, uh, they know how to win, these young fellows, but not how to lose. It, it's not the Queen of Spades. It's the Countess. Whoever, whatever it was, poor Lieutenant Harmon went out of his mind and is now confined in room number 18 of the Obukov Hospital, where he constantly mutters, three, seven, ace. Three, seven, queen. As for Lizaveta, she married Lieutenant Tomsky. See how unpredictable life can be? We're only sure of one thing, which is that I shall return in just a few moments. of the three cards. The secret, which turned out to be no secret at all. And if you want to apply that lesson to life, how many secrets actually do exist? How many mysteries on closer examination prove to contain absolutely no hidden meanings? Is life a simple affair that we attempt to complicate? Well, seven times each week, we try to answer that question, and who knows, one time, we might actually succeed. Our cast included Michael Tolan, Ann Shepard, Ian Martin, Bryna Rayburn, and Robert Dryden. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next tale. Why do you say that? For some purpose, this man of science is making... A study of you. I... I know that look of his. I have seen that cold illumination as he bends over a bird, a mouse, a butterfly, which, in pursuit of some experiment, he has killed by the perfume of a flower. I'm inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams... <laughs> <laughs>